Gracie Jiu Jitsu rocks. Welcome to the Gracie Jiu Jitsu Rocks podcast, a podcast dedicated to Gracie Jiu Jitsu and all things Gracie, including self defense, competition, anti bullying, women's self defense and empowerment nutrition, and most especially, the people involved in Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. This podcast is for the average Joe. It's for anyone who practices, trains, teaches, or just loves to talk about or hear about Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. We'll explore the lives of Gracie Jiu-Jitsu practitioners, how they got involved in the art, and what effect it's had on their lives. So buckle up and enjoy the ride. Welcome to episode 46 of the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Rocks podcast. As always, I'm your host, Marty Josie, and thanks for listening. Today is all about the ICP, Instructor Certification Program of the Gracie Academy. And most of you listening have probably heard about uh, the program. It is a a world-renowned program, and uh, I do have some exciting guests today on the show that have recently attended and completed that program, and we're going to hear from them. Those include the first three Pedro Sauer black belts who uh, recently completed the program. So the first three people from Master Pedro's organization, and that's Alan Manganello, David Christick, and Robbie Singh. And we'll be hearing from them in just a moment. We're also going to hear from two Grace University blue belt students that uh, just completed the program as well, and they are local here in North Carolina. Uh, people that I know very well. So before we get to that, let's uh, let's do a quick shout out. Uh, I want to shout out to Joshua Page. Now Joshua uh, is someone I met at uh, Pedro Seminar here in North Carolina, Mark Kukro's school uh, in Harrisburg, North, North Carolina, last September. And I partnered up with him for the seminar. Great guy, and I meant to do a shout out to him before. Kind of forgot to do that. So. Uh, just saw that his academy, which is the Academy of Martial Arts in Hickory, North Carolina, uh, is just now becoming a Pedro Sauer Affiliates school as well. So shout out to Joshua. Great guy. Okay, also wanted to shout out to a couple of guys from Team Bundy, Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. First person is Micah Bender. And I uh, wanted to read one of Micah's Facebook posts because I thought it was really good. And that post is, whoever gives Hinder Gracie and Hedron Gracie flack for their blue belt process. Let me say this, do the work. After 10 years, I caught myself sweating and working as hard for this blue belt test as I did for my blue belt eight years ago for Pedro Sauer. Unless you adopt this curriculum for yourself and try it firsthand, please don't speak uneducated thoughts and opinions. Jim Bundy agrees and he is talking right beside me. And that's from Micah Bender. Team Bundy Gracie Jiu-Jitsu in Warren, Ohio. So great, uh, great words. Um, and this is somebody who just went through the combatives program and tested for his technical blue belt, uh, but has been training many, many years in the Pedro Sauer organization. Same applies to Jim Bundy, who owns the Team Bundy Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Academy and is a black belt as well, but recently went through the combatives program and tested for that technical blue belt. So he is actually going to be our guest for the Make a Difference, Make an Impact segment today and uh, going to be doing that for us. So shout out to these guys as well. Uh, They all demonstrate the 
white belt mindset of always learning, always continuing development, and always having an open mind when it comes to learning, growing, and development. Okay, I went through the ICP in 2011, and uh, I'm not going to say a whole lot about it. I'm let the let the my guests do most of the speaking about it, but I will say that it is one of the most incredible programs I've ever been through, uh, one of the most incredible experiences I've ever been through, and truly life changing. So, without further ado, let's hear from our guests about the ICP. <laughs> Okay, I'm speaking with David Christick, and David's the owner and head instructor at Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Templestow in Melbourne, Australia. So welcome, David. Hey, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. All right. And uh, David's one of the three Pedro Sauer black belts who uh, recently completed the ICP, or Instructor Certification Program, through the Gracie Academy. So... If you would, David, just start by just briefly giving us your martial arts background and history and, and kind of how you found out about the ICP and what led you to decide to uh, go through that. Oh, sure. No problem at all. Um, well, basically, my family background has always been involved in, in martial arts, um, boxing, kickboxing, all that sort of stuff. At 17, um, I, I did my first jiu-jitsu class. Um, under the guy that got his, he was the first Australian to get a uh, jiu-jitsu black belt. And um, then the, the rest is, as they say, is history. I ended up um, uh, becoming one of Pedro Sauer's students about five years ago. And, uh, yeah, been, been uh, happy ever since. And one of those things that, uh, that happened there was Pedro came to Australia and he told us that um, – you know, this door would be opening for us and we should uh, look into it because it wasn't a compulsory thing for us to do um, with uh, with Master Pedro. He, he's put it to us and said, like, do it if you want. So, um, yeah, we, we ended up uh, going going through that. And, of course, you know, there was, there was a bit of skepticism at the beginning, but um, uh, uh, there, there was no way... Um, you know, we're, we're not listening to Pedro as well. It's like, you know, I, I rang him up a few times and he's it's like, Dave, the only thing you have to remember is it's not compulsory, but I'm doing it at my school. So, you mm. know, when someone like, like Pedro actually says to you, I'm doing this, you know, right. it's, it's, you know, you, you, you have to be uh, yeah, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty crazy not to take that advice because he's the sort <laughs> of guy that, um, He's the sort of guy that always have to puts his students first, you know. And mm, and some of my friends good. over here, um, one guy that was supposed to come with us that didn't because he, he ended up getting a knee injury, um, Phil, he, he was – he and, and, and one of my, my very other very good friends, uh, Robbie Singh, um, he said, come on, Dave, we've got to do this. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. And he's like – Come on, man, let's do it. And I was like, okay, we'll do it. <laughs> and I <laughs> rang up Alan and I spoke to Alan and – yeah, so it, it took about five seconds of arm twisting before I ended up uh, jumping <laughs> on board with that one. <laughs> right, right, right. So what was the process like once you decided to, to finally jump in or to quickly jump in? And uh, was it what you expected? Was it different than you expected? Tell us what it was like going through it. Well, when we decided that it was time to go um, like, and we're going to do it, it was whirlwind. It was crazy. We um, The first stage was the um, passing the combatives with the requisite marks, which which at the time was you had to score 90 plus. Um, and we managed to do, all three of us, Phil, Robbie and myself, we, we managed to do that um, from here in 10 days, um, mm, which was, wow. it was ridiculous. I wouldn't recommend yeah. it. Um, take your time. <laughs> that, that's, that, that. That is, that's crazy, man. That's, wow. Yeah, it's, it's pretty nuts. Um, but that's, you know, myself, you know, I've been training for 20 years mm -hmm. and, um, you know, that the advantage that we had going in was a lot of the techniques that we use were already very similar 
So mm-hmm. we, we didn't have to really sort of change our mindset or technique radically to to fit in because of Master Pedro's uh, teachings. So, sure. you know, that it, it, we did have an advantage going in, but still doing it in 10 days was pretty crazy. Then, <laughs> so once we did that and, you know, you know, Hannah, Hannah got back to us. He's like, bro, you did fantastic. And I'm like, oh, cool. Now, what, what's next? <laughs> so <laughs> the, then, then the uh, ICP, uh, you know, process starts. So you do, you, you, know, you fill out your applications and everything and they approve you. And then it's like, okay, so the ICP lectures are unlocked. And we normally you have 60 days which is the standard um, amount of time. So from the time it's unlocked for then for you to submit all your, your, your required recordings and, and videos and stuff um, is 60 days. Well, we actually did it in 19 um, because oh, wow. we, we didn't actually have a lot of time because this was like coming into Christmas last year. And if we were going to make it in January, we had to really put the pedal to the metal and um, you know, get it done. And that, wow. that's that's a one shot process too. So we had to score a ninety five or above in and you know, actually do do well enough to be invited in under a third the time. So as the process itself was was pretty full on. It was um yeah, it it was a whirlwind, it was a lot of work, but you know, it's the sort of work that you're happy to do if you if you live jiu-jitsu if you breathe jiu-jitsu then you know you, you'll do it and right. I, and it's it's not some uh you know you sort of just okay look at the videos and tick the box and you know throw a few questions up there it's quite an involved process and um yeah it's 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 actually quite detailed which i enjoy a lot the, mm. the detail and the, and the level of instruction that I received on being an instructor was was pretty amazing and um, I I have to say that you know I I consider myself a pretty good teacher but you know I was I was missing that critical 10% which is um, which is what was really highlighted in the in the video lectures for the ICP so once we passed that you know we were sweating on that over Christmas it was um, (laughs) you know we had to sort of organize stuff and we didn't even know if we were gonna get invited we didn't know our marks um, until, you know, I think it was just, I think I got my marks back on Christmas Eve or something. Oh, wow. And, <laughs> and so like... it was, it was pretty, it was pretty, uh, yeah, it was pretty hectic. And, um, sounds like a whirlwind for sure. And your level of dedication has to be so, so strong. It sounds like you guys were completely committed. And, um, and again, I'm, I'm saying this to all of you guys that, I really respect uh, and commend you for, you know, already being so accomplished and experienced in your own right, but to uh, go ahead and and decide to go back and do this. And and like you said, maybe add that 10% that can take you to the next level. So that's really cool. It it was a cool experience. And and just from top to bottom, you know, if you are committed, it's it's no, it's no big deal. You will do the work and it's, it it will take time and you've really got to put in, but now, anyone that's committed to anything will do exactly the same thing. Absolutely. So when you went to the live portion, what, what was that like? That was awesome. That was awesome. Um, Robbie and I actually, you know, we, we jumped on the plane. We, we got there because Phil couldn't make it, which was uh, – we were sort of a bit upset because, you know, Phil, he was supposed to come with us. But um, mm. he's going through in July. So that should be pretty cool. Good, good. Um, but, yeah, it, we got off, we got off the plane. It was like seven in the morning in LA when we got off the plane. We get to the hotel. So just we rock up at this hotel that the uh, the Gracie Academy uh, sort of rigged up and and suggested that we go to. We booked there, and you know we get there and we walk into this place. It's an amazing place, you know. And um, they say, oh, we're not actually checking people in until the afternoon. Oh man. So um, we're like, so what do we do? Oh, you know what we'll do. It's it's not that far from the hotel to the academy, so we got them to hold right. our bags, grab that, grab some training gear, and we started walking. And we didn't one hundred percent know where we were going, <laughs> <laughs> so we we walked from the hotel to the academy uh, on wow. our first day there, which turned out to be I think five or six miles. 
I was going to say, it's, <laughs> by, when you say it's not very far, by car it's not very far, but walking is a nice little hike. <laughs> it's so it ended up turning out yeah, to be, yeah. you know, like a hour and a half walk or something. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, that hotel is at the uh, Ayers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, nice place. So you walked all the way there and then, uh, we, and then walk, what? we walked there, we, you know, we're sweating, smell terrible. You know, we just got <laughs> off a plane for, you know, 16 hours or whatever it was. <laughs> right. And, um, yeah, everyone was so friendly. Um, Grandmaster Hodion, you know, walked in and, hey, what's up, guys? You know, <laughs> he's, you know, he's a super friendly guy. Everyone was super friendly, very accommodating. And then we ended up doing the um, the afternoon, like the lunchtime class there. Mm-hmm. And we, we trained for a few days before we even got it. We, we got to the ICP because we got there early, nice. which was great. Nice. It was a great experience just to see how the academy actually runs. Right. Um, you know, as a student, you walk in there as a student. And, uh, you know, yeah, as far as academies go, I've been around a little bit. I've seen a lot of academies, and that was by far um, one of the most pleasant experiences. The only other the only other academy I've ever been to that was as pleasant, you know, where people were very friendly and everything was Master Pedro's Academy out in, um, in Virginia. Mm. And... Yeah, I've, I've been to a lot of cool academies. I've been to a lot of great academies, but uh, these ones were like, you know, I'm, I'm talking an absolute top draw. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so we ended up doing the classes there, and we met a whole heap of people, and everyone was so friendly. It just, you know, like sometimes you show up to a mat, and if you go there with a friend, you sort of resign yourself to the fact that you're training with each other because no one else knows you. Right. Um, and Robbie and I had already agreed that we're, like, we're not going to train with each other while we're there. Because we can do that any time while we're here, so we, we're going to go out of our way to to you know make friends and and go and train with other people, and we didn't even have to do that because it was oh hey man what's your name where are you from come train with me and that was sort of you know, <laughs> they grab you nice. by the hand and pull you on the mat and everyone's so friendly and uh, it was just a great experience and then once we hit the ICP that was awesome so all the, the you know whole people a bunch of people are in town returning for this icp from their icp some of them have been coming back for you know several years to help out and the first day was you know and everything is is you know it's a bit scary because you know everything is okay so if you fail this section <laughs> you know <laughs> don't bother right <laughs> right don't bother coming back because you know you're not ready and um, it's it's a one shot deal, and that that's why you know the absolute commitment was necessary because it is a one shot deal. If you don't go through, um, well, you don't go through, and it's not a situation where yeah, you wait a few months and try again. No, you're just you're not going to be a, a, a an instructor under us. I mean, if you can't commit a hundred percent, then you know why are you here? Which right. I totally understand the logic. You, you've you've got to be all about that or not at all. And um, especially when it comes to being an instructor, as as um, Hiro and Hannah say, you know, anyone can – jiu-jitsu is for everyone. Anyone can do Gracie jiu-jitsu, but not everyone can teach Gracie jiu-jitsu. And that's what they're really doing is they're sorting out the, uh, mm. you know, the, the, the cream. That's what they want. They want the, the upper-level guys that are absolutely committed, So, which was great to be a part of that. And, you know, the first day was live testing, so they go take you through your – your um your combative stuff and you get tested live and yeah under under a very watchful set of eyes which is yeah it's pretty cool and then awesome. um yeah grandmaster hodion gave us a, a gracie diet like he, he sort of pulled us pulled us under the mat just after all that finished you know he gave us a bit of a gracie diet um you know rundown and all that sort of stuff which was really cool the second day was all um learning practice you know, and, and everyone there that was there to help you, uh, all the former ICP um, alum, alumnus, I guess would be the word, because um, mm-hmm. it is university. <laughs> um, <laughs> they they all help you with all your stuff. So, you know, you go through, you know, all the all the stuff they want to teach you and, and you go through it with them and they point out, okay, you could have done this, you could have done that or... It, it was never a situation where someone was ragging on you either. It was not like, no, you messed it up. Do it again. No, it was like, no, 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 that was really good, but check this out. And then you could sort of see everyone was such a great teacher there. And even even the guys that you know were not Huron and Hannah, were not 
some of the black belts there, you know, like Alex Stewart and, and um, Carlos Diaz and all those guys. Right. You know, everyone's such a, a great instructor. They've been taught so well to teach. And on the third day was examinations, and that was, you know, you, you practice, you practice, you practice. And during any exam, you're going to feel those nerves. Sure. And um, uh, absolutely fantastic um, experience. But, yeah, there's a panel of three uh, instructors watching you uh, teach certain sections of what they've assigned to you for that particular exam. And then on top of that, Hanno had his camera phone right up near my face while I was teaching. Wow. And Nothing I, intimidating about that, right? Not at all. Not <laughs> at all. Which was, he, he, it was Alan, Robbie, and myself. That, that video actually made an appearance um, on YouTube and went yeah, through Facebook and everything. Absolutely. And that footage was like, it was really that close. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I went, I went beat red at one point and um, yeah, I was just like you know, nervous as hell, but <laughs> sure, <laughs> it was pretty funny. And uh, I saw the video and, uh, and uh, I, was, I was, I was pretty stoked because I was already back in Australia when I saw it. And then Hen right. is like, uh, so you forgive me for, for sticking the camera in your face now? He wrote me a message, you know. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> I said, absolutely, man. It was awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, it sounds like just an amazing experience overall for you. And uh, again, you have all my respect for going through it. And uh, before we close, anybody you want to uh, give a shout out to? Oh, of course. And, and and thank you very much. You know, it's sure. a, um, it's something that, yeah, is is not easy. Would would not be easy for anyone to to jump in on, uh, particularly if they're if they've been around for a while. But I have to say, like I said, I was missing the critical ten percent. You know, it's it's great being you know eighty five or ninety percent there, but that critical missing portion was really what made made the uh, made it excellent for me. Um, and the school has benefited massively. So in terms of shout outs, I have to shout out to all my students. At Gracie Jiu Jitsu Temple, so all the all the Jiu Jitsu crew out here in Australia, particularly, uh, also particularly my my wife, who you know, uh, you know, was 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 looking after the kids and you know everything while I was off gallivanting around in LA. So right, right. <laughs> and she trains too. She wants to go. She wants to go through the ICP as well. Uh, so nah, awesome. So that's going to be cool when she does that. And um, yeah. So my my business partner, of course, Keith. He's uh, he's also a student of mine at, at, at the academy. But he, uh, you know, all, all these all these um, all these people, my students, my my wife, my business partner, my parents, everybody were very supportive during all this. And a huge thank you for to the Gracie Academy, uh, particularly Hannah Hiron, uh, Grandmaster Hodion, of course, Victor, um, who's the director of operations out there at the Torrance Academy. Everyone, everyone there was so fantastic. Um, you, you could not hope for a better experience. I couldn't recommend it highly enough. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I, I appreciate you uh, taking the time and uh, not only letting us, letting us get to know you a little bit, David, uh, but sharing your insights about the program. I'm sure a lot of people will benefit from this, and if anybody is you know considering it, uh, this will certainly give them the information and the uh, the motivation to to go for it. So, thank you, sir. I, I really appreciate it, and wish you. Uh, much success in your new endeavors and in your school. Likewise, likewise, sir, likewise. And uh, thanks for having me on the show. That's, that's awesome. All right. Be well, my friend, and thanks. Take care, bro. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, I'm speaking with Alan Manganello of Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Louisville. So welcome, Alan. Hi, how are you? Doing well, sir. Thank you. So in keeping with speaking about the ICP, if you would just um, – Share with us a little brief history. Just take a, couple, a minute or two to tell about your background and then what led you to the ICP, and then we'll we'll go from there if you would. Sure. Well, I've been training with the Gracie family for about 22 years now. I started back in '94, so um, I've been very close with them. Uh, trained with Hickson, got my first two belts from him, and uh, been with him and Pedro Sauer, and I've always been with the Gracie Academy. And I had Hero and Gracie out of my academy one time to do a seminar, and um, we were talking. He's like, you know, hey bro, how come you're not a certified training center and to be honest with you, I didn't have a good answer for him I'm like I, I really don't know to be honest with you <laughs> so um, he's like man you should really look into doing that you know you'd be a perfect fit for it and you know, you've been with our family for so many years I've known you since I was a kid and whatnot so I was like man you know I really love the combatives program anyway I really want to teach the combatives in my academy as it is so what do I need to do to get certified to teach that 
And uh, so I looked into it, and then I found out, well, I couldn't just teach the combatives. You had to actually get you know, um, certified in a couple other things, which I love them too, the Bully Proof program and, and everything. And then the more I looked into what the ICP was, the you know, instructor certification program, in order to be certified, I, was, I just fell in love with it. I was like, man, this is great. It, everything just made sense. In fact, it was, uh-huh. that's the first thing I said when uh, I first learned jujitsu was this makes sense. And when I started getting into that, I, I, I couldn't stop reading about it, and I just went full force. Awesome, awesome. I love that uh, that statement. This makes sense. This just makes sense. That's great. So when you uh, got accepted and you started out, um, tell us about the process you went through. Uh, what it was like? Was it what you thought it would be? And you know, going through it, both the uh, videos as well as the live portion, and then just kind of tell us what it was like for you overall. Well, it was a, a very interesting experience for me, and in, in all positive. I mean, to be honest with you, it's the first time I've ever, I've ever done anything in my life, especially this involved, that I didn't like parts of it or something like that. You know, I loved every part of um, becoming certified and, and going to the ICP itself. You know, start off with, okay, I had to take the, the combatives test. Um, I was already a second degree black belt as, as it was, so right. I didn't think it was going to be that, that big of a deal, you know, just to go through and, and get the blue belt combatives. But man, was I wrong? I mean, the details that you had to know to where um, – you know, I just went through, and, and to be honest, I didn't really study the combatives that much specifically to take the test. I thought I kind of knew what I knew, and I was effective. I mean, I can do an arm lock. I can do chokes. I can, you know, sure. I have mean, a problem with that kind of stuff, of course. But when it came time to getting graded, to be consistent, to be specific to, mm-hmm. what, to where their standards were, I only scored an 88 the first time I took the test. And you yeah. had to score a not, which was still passing, but you had to score a 90 in order to uh, go through the ICP. And that, you know, obviously I was like, oh, I can't, I can't. I can't handle that. I got to make sure I do way better than that, you know. So I went ahead and retook the test, and um, then I scored, uh, I think, a 95 or, or even higher. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was, a, it was at least a 95 at that point. And um, so it was no joke. I mean, people want to criticize about this, you know, the Grace University thing, and it's, it's I, I challenge them to take the test and see how they do with it. And um, and it just made my jiu-jitsu that much better, I think. You know, a lot of good details that I, I understand why they're teaching them, and, and I think they're great. Um, so I went through the process to um go through the icp and how to you know do the online videos um of how to apply the teaching methodologies of grandmaster alio and um while i was going through that i already started incorporating that into my academy and my students instantly started noticing some changes and loved it and i didn't want to let on too much what i was doing because i wasn't sure 100 percent i was even gonna be able to do it all you know the way they needed me to right and um so i went through and started making those changes and, and my, my academy just started taking off i mean the attendance started picking up we're signing up more new students. Students were sticking around longer. People, old students were coming back. Hey, I heard you're doing things a little differently now. And it was just, I and mean, I hadn't even, nothing was official. And that was already a big improvement. So wow. then I went through the ICP itself and the experience out in California. I couldn't, I don't even know how I can tell you on this podcast how great it was. Um, just the, the support, the, the vibe at the academy. The Grace Academy has always been great. But now that they have this program in place, there's so many people to train with and help with. And you definitely felt accepted right away and so genuine. The biggest thing that I, that I love about um, the program is the, how genuine everybody is and how genuine the program is. Um, there's, nothing, there's nothing worse than a fake person who just wants to say nice mm-hmm. things just to kind of get their way. But, man, everybody, you know, needless to say here in Henrar, but everyone in the academy is just super cool, super great, and they really want to see you succeed and, you know, want to be there for you. So I loved it. I mean, the experience out there was just fantastic. I went through, you know, the whole program, um, got certified. Now I'm in the process of implementing everything in my academy, getting everything transitioned. And um, it's it's a challenge because there's a lot of work to do. But, man, it's great. I love every bit of it. Sounds awesome. Uh, Let's go back just for a moment to the live portion. Um, I know the video segment is just incredibly rigorous. And then when you get to the live portion, uh, isn't it just incredible, the energy of everybody around there and, 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 and where, you're, you know, all the people that you meet and the camaraderie, the instant connection, uh, just like nothing else I've done. That's for sure. Right. I, I agree a hundred percent. And that's, that's what I was saying earlier, as far as it wasn't just one or two people that are like that. I mean, the whole group, everybody that was there, you know, we all have that same common thread, actually two common threads. One, you know, we all love jujitsu, but two, we want to teach it and teach it well. And uh, we want to offer the best thing we can for our students. And that's, that's, another, that's a whole other level of people right there. You know, it's one thing to want to be good in jiu-jitsu and, and love jiu-jitsu, but it's another thing to actually want to share it and share it where it matters. And um, 
the, the vibe there. I mean, you, again, you can't, you can't describe it. And the thing that I love that Henry's doing is they, they talked about this with ICP was, you know, Hey, what, if, what, if, why don't we have an ICP on the East coast or, um, why don't we do one out there, do other, you know, remote locations so we can certify mm-hmm. people so to come all the way to California. And one of the, the reasons he doesn't want to do that, you know, he did entertain the idea, but one of the reasons he doesn't want to do that is because people need to experience being at headquarters. They yeah, need to experience sure. being out there, you know, in the home base. And, um, yeah. and I, I couldn't agree with that more. You know, you're exactly right. You're not going to get the same feel somewhere else. Not that there aren't other great academies, other great locations. Sure. You know, it's just not, it's not headquarters, not Torrance, California, where all this began. So I I um, completely agree. Yeah. It's a great, great, great uh, atmosphere out there. You mentioned a minute ago how it, it, even before you completed it, you had already seen the uh, somewhat of an impact in your academy. Uh, how's it going now that after it's been just a little while and um, you're kind of realizing that full effect? What, what's that been like? Well, it's been great. I mean, my students are super excited. They've told me even, hey, we're excited because you're excited. We can tell that you're excited and that excites us. Um, everybody loves the organization. Like just, the, just for an example, the other day, um, I, I finally came out with the attendance cards and the uh, calendar of the monthly schedule so they'll know what classes are going to be taught when. Just something simple as that. I've been promising them for a while, and it just takes a while to get to that point where you can actually get them out to everybody. And um, the day that I put them out, which was just last week, um, everybody was so excited. It was like a totally different atmosphere in the academy all of a sudden. They just they love that kind of structure. They love the fact they can look down and see exactly not just how many classes they've been to, but which classes they've learned. Um, which classes are on deck, what to study for, what to, you know, what to be ready for, just the fact that we have a plan for them, you yeah. know, and, and um, just that implementation alone has been great. The kids are all excited. The Bullyproof program, you know, is going great. We had our very first Gracie game day, um, which is what you do after the uh, two months of, of studying a chapter in the character development program, which right. January and February was responsibility. So we just had, you know, 50 kids at our first Gracie game day. And these kids wow. couldn't be more excited. And they, the parents are loving the new programs. I'm telling you, it's, it's like a whole new That's world. Awesome. It's, like, it's, like I, it's like I started jiu-jitsu all over again, and it's like I started my business all over again. This is exactly the jiu-jitsu academy I've always wanted to have. And I've been teaching wow. for over 20 years. You know, so. Wow, that's that's really exciting, man. Hearing you, hearing the passion and the excitement in your voice, it's just you know really inspiring and refreshing. And I have a lot of respect for you because uh, you and all the the guys that recently completed it, you, you've been an instructor for many years and already touched your lives, you know, on a on a high level. But to go back and say, hey, I want uh, I want to take it to you an even higher level or go a little further with that's that's great. That really says a lot about you. So. Hats well, thanks. Bro. I appreciate that. No, I think it's great because of the fact that, you know, um, teaching for a long time and, and it's and like being a student in jiu-jitsu. If you're a true student, you're going to keep wanting to learn new things, new yeah. techniques, new moves, new concepts. And it's the same thing with teaching and running a business for that matter. You know, I want to I want to give my students the best possible instruction I can give them. I want to give them the best experience I could possibly give them. I want them, I want them to see exactly how great jiu-jitsu is, you know, and when you can run a program the way the, the Grace University put on now, and more specifically, the instructor certification program, you know, it's something to get super excited about. And you, you, I mean, if you're really passionate about it, if you really do want to be a good teacher, a good instructor, you know, you'll really look into it and at least give it a shot, you know. And um, it, it's fantastic. I love it. Awesome. All right. Well, listen, I really appreciate you sharing your insight and uh, thoughts about the process and the experience with us. Uh, just quickly, you have anybody you want to uh, shout out to before we close? Well, yeah, I want to, of course, thank um, here and Henry Gracie for uh, giving me this opportunity. I want to thank all the Gracie brothers themselves, you know, the, the Gracie family, Helson and Hickson and everybody, just for giving me this opportunity. And, uh, of course, Master Pedro Sauer, who's now uh, recently come on board as well with the whole process and the whole organization and uh, going through it himself. I, 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 again, much respect to him. Talk about somebody who's been in it for a while and wanting to do it. And then, of course, uh, Frank Cucci. I want to give Frank Cucci a shout-out, too. He's, he's my uh, testing partner helped me out with a lot of things, uh, showed me a lot of good things that he's done with his academy to kind of let me know what to expect. And, uh, you know, big props to him too, for sure. Awesome. He's an awesome individual. All the guys you mentioned were. All right, sir. Thank you so much. And uh, best of luck and awesome success with your academy. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for the opportunity. Okay. I'm now speaking with Robbie Singh. And Robbie is the owner and head instructor of Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Burwood in Burwood, Melbourne, Australia. So welcome, Robbie. Thank you for having me. Yeah, my pleasure, sir. Let's start, Robbie, with uh, 
briefly tell us about your martial arts background and then how you learned about the ICP, kind of what led you to it and, um, and how you decided to, to do that process. Yeah, so um, my background in martial arts is I actually started uh, in karate when I was around uh, nine and a half, ten years old, um, and I still instruct karate uh, at our club as well here. Uh, so I've been doing that for almost uh, 21 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, so really enjoy that side of it. And uh, about 11 years ago, um, I started doing amateur boxing as well um, and getting ready to, to compete in some amateur boxing and then watch some UFC and... Uh, had seen some of the Gracies in Action stuff and started getting really interested in, in this jiu-jitsu thing. Um, and that's when I uh, found my, my professor, Dave Christick, in, uh, who was in Bayswater at the time, um, just behind my, my parents' restaurant. And I'd go there and train before work and, and then go work the, the, at the restaurant. Um, and uh, that's how it kind of got started. It's just a, a little bit of curiosity. Turned into action. Very nice. How did it come about that you, you got interested and, and uh, decided that you would pursue uh, completing the ICP? Yeah, so uh, like my, um, my thing with uh, martial arts has always been about self-defense. And um, so we, we spent a lot of time with our jiu-jitsu primarily focused on all the self-defense um, techniques in there. And so we were, we, were, we were focusing a lot on what the, the kind of syllabus that the – the Gracie Combatives and the Gracie Academy has with uh, Grandmaster Elio's book and, and the stuff that uh, Master Pedro had given us in regards to self-defense. So we were always working in the same kind of line with them. Um, and so we learned about the ICP like years ago, but we never went down that route. Um, we were associated to Pedro, and you know, Pedro comes with, with so much knowledge himself. Mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, and you know, like he's just an amazing mind. Like, I, like I, I feel like he's the mechanic of jujitsu. He just knows how to put everything together. And we we're getting that information, um, but uh, and the syllabus that he had was well. But to flesh it out further, um, you're, you're always looking for more information. And the the Gracie University has just found a way to uh conceptualize the the information and and feed it in a way to people that is just so concise and sequential um it just makes sense and and i come from a background where uh i'm i'm, I'm for my day job i work in psychology mm-hmm. uh, i work in uh behavioral um analysis uh so i work with children with autism and we teach them if they can't walk we teach them how to walk if they can't talk we teach them how to talk wow they, that's awesome yeah. So you know, and, and everything we teach is sequential. There's mastery levels, and you know, there's prerequisite skills you've got to have before you can move on to the next step. And I kind of felt like the same was with jujitsu. You have to have these foundation skills before you can go to the next step. But there was no one who was kind of uh, offering that except for GU. Um, and so you had these people who are going online and actually getting one of the best educations in jujitsu, um, but maybe not having an instructor who's uh, like not having an instructor at all because they're going and they're not trusting going to a school because they're worried about it being like a competition style or that they're going to have mm-hmm. to fall in their first class and get smashed or they've gone and had that experience um, and found it really uh, discouraging to kind of get started in jiu-jitsu um, and then you know, GU is offering this way that they can learn it in a better way than, than most schools are, are offering it to them at the moment. So I, I was always intrigued by that by what they were doing there um, but I had a loyalty to my instructor um, that I was going to follow with his curriculum and follow with uh, with uh, the way we had gone. So um, I had voiced it that I was interested, but never followed through until I had the okay from him and that he was going to go through it as well. And then uh, in November of last year, we had Master Pedro down in Australia. Um, and he kind of uh, gave us a little heads up about what was going on. Um, with mm-hmm. the between the Pedro Sauer Association and the uh, and the Gracie Academy, um, and then uh, the Ronda Rousey fight was in Melbourne um, for UFC 193, I think it was, um, and Hannah was down as her coach, um, and so uh, being opportunistic with going to have the best training partners in the world, uh, I sent Hannah an email on like Tuesday morning, just going, hey, I have a club, and if you want to teach, would you like to do a seminar? Um, and wow. so I'm like. Um, two days notice, we organized like 50 people to, to run a seminar on a Friday night. 
um, and he went through the guillotine, guillotine mastery seminar. Um, and then the day before that, he was doing a seminar at another school. So I went over there and kind of met him um, and, and did that seminar. And it was just once you get the once you get the feel for his teaching and you get the feel for the way he uh, he approaches it, you really get to um, to see like it's 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 not. It's not like a show that he's putting on. It's how passionate he is about jujitsu, and yes. and yeah, and that's where I was kind of like, okay, well, this this is somebody who you want to be affiliated with because he's not just giving the best knowledge out there, but he's very dedicated to making sure other people are receiving it. No doubt, he is incredibly passionate. He and Hiram both are extremely passionate, and their knowledge and their belief about spreading the word yeah, and, throughout the world about jiu-jitsu so and they're not worried about trying to hide what they know from other people they want everybody to know um and i think there's a realization that you know that the 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 mountain the top of the mountain is getting very far and the, you know the, the water is clearest at the top of the mountain and they're they kind of their mountaintop is is going there's more generations that disappear from from uh, grandmaster elio that information is being diluted more and more. So if they can capture it on video and discuss it between each other while they're filming it and put like they're putting out the best knowledge out there so you don't get a watered down version, you know, 10, 20, 30. Absolutely. So, you know, so true. All of that is huge motivation to become part of their, you know, their family that they're, that they're building there in, um, in LA and uh, through the GU system. Um, and what better way to do that than to just go and jump on and become part of it? Absolutely. So yes. once you had pulled the trigger and were a part of it, what was yeah. it like going through it and then actually uh, going out um, to LA and do the live portion? Yeah. Look, um, the all the all the stuff beforehand, all the the material you need to learn and go through. I was surprised at how in depth it all is and how accurate is and coming from my, my you know, um, teaching psychology background how attuned everything was to you know like fundamental principles in teaching psychology so straight away when I saw that I was kind of like oh this is this is fantastic um, and then th- then the work gets started and you start trying to put it into practice and that ends up a lot of work like they they've got a high expectation of what they want from their instructors um, mm-hmm. and it's different you know like you might have a a black belt knowledge in how to apply jujitsu, but what they're trying to give you is a black belt in being able to teach jujitsu, and they're two yes. very different things. Um, and I think that's what a lot of people forget when they when they think about this ICP and they hear that there's blue belts teaching, you know, the combatives program. It's like no, because they're being highly trained to be able to teach that program. Um, Absolutely. And, yeah, and to teach in general. So, like, I have the utmost respect for anybody who goes through that ICP program because you know you just get you just get a really good set of skills to teach um, and to and to you know articulate the information that's provided to the general public. Yeah, that's a great point, and I'm glad you made that because I've had this discussion with many people on the outside. If you've never gone through this or are really explored, you know, in depth what it's about, you really can't understand, um, you know, how could you understand all that goes into this? So when you hear the, that a blue belt is, is opening their own place and, and, and teaching, you know, you're kind of like, what's going on? You know, yeah. uh, you hear a lot of people, you know, giving the Academy flack for that. But when you really look at what they're teaching, they're becoming black belts in teaching, like you said, and, and teaching the, the combatives. Mm. Uh, the street self-defense uh, and in no way do they ever try to portray uh, the blue belt instructors as this you know on the same par as a black belt in jiu-jitsu um, yeah. but they do become quote black belt teachers uh, yeah. in in the gracie combatives program without a doubt and and they can certainly deliver on that because of the high standards and instruction yeah i completely agree um and then so we did all the work here in in in, you know, in australia um, and then we had the opportunity to go over to LA for the ICP, and that, that was a pretty big decision because financially, to try and go out to LA, like the Australian dollar was, was sitting at about you know uh, sixty cents to a US dollar, so there's a forty percent you know addition to any kind of you know fees you're paying for hotels and food and all that type of stuff. Wow. Stuff. But, so you know like um th- that kind of consideration coming from like a like a because I don't get to do my my jiu jitsu school full-time like i'm running full-time hours but i still need to work a full-time job to, sure. to viable you know i got two little kids and i want my wife to be home to help look after them because they're quite young still so you know like there's, there's a lot going in take time off work 
you know, have somebody else teach at the club, put that trust in somebody. So it was a lot to make the decision to actually pull the trigger and go over. Um, but when we did decide that, yes, this is what we want to do, we made sure we went a couple of days early just to kind of go into the academy and get a vibe for it before kind of the ICP started and right. to see what it's like just generally. What is the, the, the academy like and what culture have they built and, and how does it all kind of operate? And when you, when you kind of go there for a couple of days, um, it's pretty crazy. Like it, the, the culture that they've built there and the people that, that are there from the front desk to, to the people you know, that, that, that are cleaning the place to the assistant instructors to the head instructors, everybody is, is there to make everybody feel comfortable and everybody is there to, I don't even know if they're, they're there to make people feel comfortable, but they're just nice people. So, mm -hmm. so everything is so, so awesome as you're kind of there. And um, I was just impressed. And it's kind of like that thing, like you're waiting for the pin to drop to be like, okay, so where, where are the faults in this? Because it's <laughs> right. Good, right. And it doesn't happen. Like four days later, nothing's happening. And then the ICP starts and it just gets better because now you're getting all this information and you're, you're interacting with so many different people from around the world mm -hmm. now. Um, and like you're networking with people and you're learning more of people about how they implement certain procedures in their schools and so much forth. And it just becomes a really uh, awesome experience. Like I think that was one of the most valuable weeks that I've spent in my life in regard to not just my training, but just like uh, but branching out to other martial artists. What was the most memorable thing that stands out about the live portion for you? Was it just being around so many people from everywhere and the incredible energy, or, or is there anything that stands out uh, in your mind? I actually think it's, it's the interplay between Henna and Huron during the mm. ICP and hearing them still at this point debating aspects of teaching and debating as like, like they know that they know what they're doing, but they know it can be improved. So they, they there's always this interplay going on between them where they're trying to work it out. I think that makes it. Um, so important for an instructor to feel that it's an ongoing procedure and you don't just have the answers and that you're continuously trying to better yourself and improve yourself. And they're trying to do it in the moment. It's not like they're going to say, like, I've got the answer for this. It's okay, let's discuss right, right. it. Let's get the right answer and go from there. And what it teaches you is, like, it's okay to seek more information. It's okay mm -hmm. to have a conversation with your fellow instructor, you know, who has a school, you know, in another, another suburb where you can kind of sit there and go, I'm having this this issue or you know, I'm having trouble teaching this part or um, you know when people come in and inquire I'm having trouble uh, getting them to stick to you know coming in and trying a class you know yeah, all those things like how do you go about it and people are like oh this is what I've tried this is what I've tried now you've got an answer about how you can go through it that's great that's really great a great aspect of it for sure mm. so as we come to a close Robbie um, what impact has it had on you since you went back home to Australia and, and started implementing this? Uh, I think one, one of the biggest things is that it's made me more self-reflective during my teaching. Mm -hmm. so it's not You're not just there teaching your technique. Um, you're there after every class and you're really going through and going like, did, did I prompt that person the right way to get the technique right? Did I uh, address the technique correctly in the moment? to be able to make sure people got the information. Did I make sure I had an interaction with every one of my students on the mat? Because you know, we have over 30 people in a class, and you've got to make sure that you're going in and, and you know, having an interaction and making sure they're getting something from you um, and that you're not just getting focused on a few people that really need your help, but even the guys who have got it, you go through and give them a little something extra. So I think that thing of like, am I teaching at my best level was one of the biggest things it did. And then the second thing was, Remembering, remembering my role. Um, coming from traditional martial arts, a lot of the time it was like if the person doesn't doesn't learn it, they weren't paying attention. So you, know, you, you give them push ups, or you give them you know there's, there's disciplinary measures for them getting right. Um, whereas you know this process is really about a teacher's role is to teach, and if the student doesn't get it right, then you haven't taught it right to them in the first place. So go back and look at how you can teach it to them in that moment. Um, and that was a big thing, like putting that burden on yourself to make sure if somebody doesn't even get this tonight, that's on you. Um, and that just keeps highlighting to you your role in all of this. And I think that was one of the most, um, the, uh, the, the biggest aspect of me coming back to, to my academy was you're a teacher and your job is to make sure people learn um, and the onus is on you. That's, that's awesome. 
Mm. Well, it sounds like it was just an incredibly powerful and, and growing experience for you. So it's, uh, it's wonderful that you were able to do that. And thank you for taking the time to uh, give us a little insight to not only you and your background, but how that experience was and the impact that it had on you. Uh, anybody you want to shout out to or thank or anything um, as we're closing? Uh, we got we got to thank Alan Mangaleno, uh, you know, from uh, Louisville for actually, you know, working this all out with Pedro and Henna and and uh, Huron and kind of starting that conversation. Um, and Frank Cucci um, for for kind of going through it first. So those guys kind of like paved the way. And then I got to thank my professor uh, Dave for Dave Christic for for just teaching me because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him and. You know, if he wasn't so open-minded about this, I don't think we would have got to the stage where we are now in it all. Um, and then just Henna and Heron, <coughs> just for just having some uh, um, just amazing um, influences in it, you know, teaching and mentors for, for Gracie Jiu Jitsu. They're just amazing people to be around. And Master Pedro for, you know, carrying us through this process for so long and giving us so much valuable skill. And for him being a great leader to actually mm-hmm. take the step and demonstrate to everybody, like, I'm going to go do the blue belt test. I want to go spend two weeks at the academy and, you know, see what it's all about for myself and, and get the vibe for myself and see what I can, you know, like that, that, that student mentality, you know, he's a, he's a student at heart, but he's a leader by nature just by doing the things that he's done in the last couple of months. He's really showing how much he loves jujitsu and so much he still wants to learn. Um, but how much of a leader he is for his organization by taking these steps to to improve himself and the organization and his academy. So, you know, you, you've got to pay uh, credit where credit's due, and, and uh, he's an amazing man for that. That's so true. Well said. And all those people you mentioned were are incredibly – Uh, are incredible people in their own right, but Mm. certainly props for him for all the reasons you just said, and what an incredible person he is, leading by example always. Uh, Did I, uh, before we close, did I uh, I see on Facebook that you just, or you have uh, an anniversary? I I did, yes, thank you. It's uh, my uh, my wife's seventh uh, anniversary, and it's our uh, 15 years together um, Uh, as a couple. So, yeah, so we've we've been uh, going to it for a while now. Uh, yeah, thank ah, you. Congratulations, I, buddy. Congratulations. I, that would be somebody who I need to thank as well as my wife because she sacrifices the most so I can do all of this. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up because uh, certainly get some brownie points on that one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, thanks again for your time and insight, uh, my friend. I appreciate it. And a lot of people will benefit from uh, hearing about your experience. So, wish you uh, continued success and good luck with your new school and long, healthy life, my friend. Thank you. Okay, I've got the distinct pleasure now of being live here at the brand new Cary CTC with Ron Wilder and Bill Osterreich. And these are some of my good friends here in North Carolina that I uh, take every opportunity I can to train with. And they uh, recently completed the ICP, so just wanted to get their input as well on that experience. So if you would, guys, just take uh, uh, just a moment and give a brief background overview of your martial arts uh, history and training and then what led you to the uh, the ICP? How did you find out about it and uh, how did you decide to pull the trigger and go through it? So either one can start. So thanks, thanks Marty. This is uh, Ron Wilder here. Um, so Bill and I trained together for about eight years or so at a in a mixed martial arts program. It started out as Hapkido uh, and then incorporated Tai Chi and grappling and weapons and a lot of scenario-based law enforcement type of of training. And uh, we uh, uh, so we we did that for a while and then uh, a couple things kind of happened. One, I was traveling a lot on business and visiting uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu schools around the country Um, and we were also in our school we were teaching uh, we were teaching kids and we were looking for curriculum and material to teach kids and Bill actually discovered uh, Bullyproof. And then from Bullyproof, I discovered the Combatives program. And as soon as we discovered that, it was like a game, a game changer. Just the, the structure of the curriculum, the way of, of uh, one, the way, that, the way to teach kids. And then two, you know, I was looking for a way to understand jujitsu because uh, the, 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 the art we had been studying wasn't really ground focused. So I liked the street aspect of Combatives Got t- totally into that. That was about four years ago now, four or five years ago now. Um, so I went through, completed the blue belt. Um, Bill kind of followed along shortly thereafter. Um, and, you know, very early on, I knew that I wanted to teach it as well. And um, so, you know, was saw a path to 
you know, to, to teach, not only learn it, but to teach it. Um, and then that led us, after you know, a longer period of time that, that, you know, to, into the ICP. Um, and so we just then completed that in January of 2016. And we opened the Cary Certified Training Center in March, basically. Yeah. And we're getting rolling now, so it's awesome. Fun. So we'll talk a little bit more about how that, that's been since you came back after that in just a moment. But once you enrolled and then started uh, going through it, I know it starts, you know, you're, you're doing the videos. What, what was your first impression? Was it what you thought it would be or was it or was there anything different than you thought it would be as you went through it? Uh, so this is Bill, by the way. Um, I have to tell you, Marty, the when, when all the videos were unlocked and the curriculum was unlocked for us and, and uh, we started going through it, it was it was like, wow. This is very intense. I mean, this is a lot of information. Um, it's not something where, you know, you just pay some money and you're gonna get your certification. It's, it's not that at all. You really have to, you have to digest a tremendous amount of information about how you teach, you know, the way you, you uh, present the material in, in a fashion that people can um, absorb it better. Um, and it really, it, it wasn't surprising because it's, it's how the, you know, when, when you were exposed to the DVDs and how they teach on there, and, uh, Grace University, you kind of understand, but it's like seeing why they did all that and the, the amount of time and effort that they put into developing this curriculum and this structure. So um, it, was, it was overwhelming at first. And at first you're like, oh, I've got, I've got several months to do this. And then you start <laughs> looking at these videos and you're like, Oh my gosh! I only have a couple months right, to do this. Right. I've got to get this taken care of, you know. So it's, it was pretty intimidating, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah, from the point you unlock it, you have basically 60 days to review it, and then submit the teaching proficiency videos, which is you know very, uh, and, and the standards for those are very demanding. Um, and we spent a lot of time, like we probably shot our, you know, slice presentation video, like I mean multiple times, 20, 30 times each before we got it yeah. right. And yeah. 10 yeah. minute intro took a long time. Um, but it's it's similar to like reflex development in you know reflex development in combatives reflex development in master cycle um, you have to develop reflexes as a teacher you have to just rep it That's you know put it. and um, you practice it a lot and you get then you, then you have to go back down and go back and break down the details like what did I miss <laughs> you have to put the same focus and dedication into teaching as you do like the actual you know skills themselves absolutely I, th I think another challenge was for me I'd, I'd already been teaching martial arts mm -hmm. for. I mean, at least the last 10 years I've been teaching. So I had to unlearn a lot of bad habits um, because the, the program I came from uh, it did not have a whole lot of structure. So a lot of times it was like, you, I'd be driving a class, not really sure what I was going to teach that night. <laughs> and so, and this is a total opposite of that. This is, you definitely know what you're you know going to gonna teach, you know how you're going to teach it. You have the ability to improvise a few things based on students' questions but they all also fit into the structure of the program. So it's not, you're not veering people off into mm -hmm. different um, areas during class. So it's a great way to stay focused and on task with what you're doing. I agree. I like how you know down to the minute detail what you'll teach and how. But it also, well, like Ron said about the repetition, you know, repetition is the mother of all skill. So once you get to that level of proficiency because of those really high standards, at that point, they do allow you, and they, well, before that point, they encourage you to bring your personality into it. So it's right. not like, even though you're teaching the same thing precisely, it's not like you're robots and you all look exactly the same. So you're teaching the same thing, but you're adding your, also your personality and your flavor to it, which makes it your own. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that another part of that personality is also connecting with the student, because we have students now coming into our CTC, and you know, they have very, very different levels of, of background. Um, of reasons why they're here, um, you know, and so part of it is relating the scenarios to their world mm -hmm. so that they can understand, um, you know, why they would use the techniques or what, what could happen in their world that, that would be relevant to them. That's a great uh, point because it's one thing to know the formula, so to speak, correct. but it's uh, quite another to be able to really connect with people mm -hmm. on their level where they are exactly. in a powerful right. way. So, great. So you had the whirlwind of the all the videos and, and all that went into that and having to shoot your own videos and to that high standard. What about when it was time to actually go out to the live portion? Tell me what that was like. <laughs> that was pretty nerve-wracking. Yeah, it's um, pretty intense. I mean, I was ex like, you get the call, like you, you submit all these videos and then, then Victor calls. And because it, even at that point, you're not sure, it, have I been accepted to come out to California? So just, again, showing the high standards of this program. 
and you get the call and it's like this elation and then it's all of a sudden this wave crashes over you're like wow this is real i gotta go out there now and i gotta do this in front of the gracies That's some real and pressure for you yeah it's so it's very intimidating yeah. um but at the same time very exciting yeah yes. you know yeah. shout out to victor by the way yeah. victor come on yeah and victor likes victor enjoys like his opportunity to kind of build up suspense you know yeah <laughs> you don't yeah. really know and then he tells you you're in and it's kind of cool so right <laughs> awesome awesome so i know you made a lot of incredible uh, people while you're out there talk about what it was like to, the energy out there and just connecting with different people from everywhere um <laughs> this, the brotherhood i mean yeah. it's it's like it, it's it's you're entering a room with people who share immediately share a common interest with you um, and it's not just like, hey, you know, we like the same movies or something. It's it's something that you're devoting your life to. So the the, the connections you make are immediate and they're pretty intense. And you, and you just walk up to someone and start talking. Within minutes, you feel like your family. Yeah. Um, and also, what was what was amazing was that all the Pedro Sauer black belts that were there, um, just kind of giving you an understanding. Like, you know, these guys are here. They they're already black belts in Jiu Jitsu uh, under one of the greatest you know teachers of all time and they're here learning the same thing I'm learning because of the importance of this structure of this program and how you know for someone for introducing someone to jiu-jitsu this is the best way to do it you know so um, that was that was yeah. amazing yeah and the other you know the other piece was the you know of the experience was you are part of this family but you also realize like it's you know the standards are really high and you know, the very first thing we do is you know the, the the blue belt verification, and you know you're you're basically running through the whole blue belt curriculum with you know experienced instructors and that you've you, never met before. You never <laughs> you never met before. You know they're being, they're giving you the indicators. They're the bad guy for you, and right. um, and it uh, um, you know and the pacing of it you know was it was done under a very compressed time frame. So. You know, it was like mentally demanding, physically demanding, you know, and you're in this intense environment. That was kind of the, you know, the opening part of it. And, um, but then you can relax a little bit and, um, you know, get to hear from Horion and Henner and Hiran and their, their exchange back and forth is always a lot of fun. Awesome. It was a great experience. Yeah. And for all the pressure and tension, once it's done, once you know that you passed it, you're just got yeah, the relief, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. And the feeling of accomplishment. So what happened when you came back home, and uh, how has it impacted your life since being back here and starting this CTC? Well, you kind of realize that, especially with us opening a school, it's like, you know, well, now the real work begins. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, this is just the beginning of the journey. And, uh, you know, one thing that was said out there was you have to be the best students in your school, you personally as instructors. And that really hit home. It's like, you know, I, it's not like now that I've passed this, I can take some time off and just work on, you know, uh, whatever I want to do. It's, it's like, no, I have to continue to study the full curriculum going forward in addition to refining my combatives. Like, I want to become a master of the combatives program when I teach that. So and that's, that's kind of the mindset I have now. Uh, so coming back to that was was a, a different than I expected. Yeah, yeah and I, I think there's the business issues of actually opening a business. Like a CTC is a business, and so there's a lot of details around that that you have to manage um, in addition to teaching the curriculum. So just you know setting up a, a legal entity and banking and mm -hmm. you know the ability to get paid and all this, all the insurance. There's a lot of details to get to get that rolling. Um, so that's been a big commitment. Um, and then in terms of the, the, but the best part of it is like day one, which was, which was for us, you know, just a few weeks ago, you know, you, you start off and there's, the, there's that one student who shows up on the very first day and you just start and you start teaching them trap and roll, standard variation, and they look at it like they've never seen anything like it, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, yeah. it's, and by the end of that class though, they, they have, you see their confidence go up because... Uh, you know, they have, they begin to feel like they, they can actually survive that situation. And that's what it's all about, yeah. right? We started our bullyproof bully proof program this week. We have an 11 year old boy who's after two classes has already gone from just being really kind of tentative and wavering. And, you know, after two classes, we've taught him, you know, tackle the giant, the, the double leg takedown and spider kid. spider kid and shark bite. And, you know, so we, we take him through a scenario where he, you know, rolls the, yeah, he does. He does the takedown. He rolls. You know. Uh, he, he rolls you over. He establishes position. He, he wears you out. You know. This kid now feels like. I mean, he can conquer the world. Wow. And it's he's amazing. got. You know. It's really cool to see people go from zero confidence to starting to feel more empowered. Absolutely. 
Yeah, it's incredibly powerful, and that's why that's why we do it. If you hear a little background noise, that's because the natives are a little restless. <laughs> the kids are right beside us, and uh, uh, the Cary CTC is in a beautiful gym with uh, weights and classes, and it's just an awesome place. So. It's called the Right Fit yeah. here in Cary. Yeah, yeah and it is. It's an amazing facility. Yep. So, what advice do you have uh, if anybody who might be considering doing this, as well as is there anybody you want to shout out to before we close? Uh, as far as the, doing the ICP, yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, it's it is it is a you have to fully commit to it. I mean, it is not something that's like, well, maybe I'll go get certified, and you know, then it's like you really have to have a goal. What what are you going to do with your certification? Because it is it's an investment in time, it's an investment in money. Um, so you need to be serious about wanting to do this. And you know, what's your motivation? You know, for me, it's like uh, I'm passionate about teaching kids anti-bullying. I was bullied as a kid, um, and it has affected my life. And, and I never, through other martial arts, I never really found the solutions that um, I wanted. And that I found those through the Bullyproof program. I don't want to share that. I mean, that's kind of my mission now is to share that. And, and for adults, the same thing. It's, as a smaller adult... Um, even in all my martial arts training since I was 10 years old, if I got on the ground and somebody bigger got on top of me, I had issues with that, you know. And sure, I could gouge their eyes out or, or do whatever from there. Um, but when I learned the combatives program, it just totally changed things for me and, and, and gave me gave me confidence that I didn't have through other martial arts. And I want to share that with people. So um, you, know, you got to think about what's your motivation for doing this. So what about you? <clears throat> Yeah, I think the motivation is key. I think you have to have a real passion to teach beginners. And I think, you know, in the jiu-jitsu world, of course, we're, we're studying Master Cycle now, and we're, we're on the path, and, um, and that's awesome. Um, yet, you know, practically speaking, like, you know, day one of the CTC, we're, we're teaching people who have never seen it before, and, you know, we, we love it. Like, we love that we get to introduce this to people, give them a skill set to, to protect themselves, whether they're a kid, a, a woman, you know, a man, like, you know, so that passion for the combatives program has to be there. Um, and then the, the, the rest of the, the jiu-jitsu journey kind of, we just trust that that kind of takes care of itself. Um, and the other thing I would say is if you're considering it, make sure you spend some time, like, visiting other CTCs, meeting other instructors, getting to know, um, you know, getting to know, you know, seeing how the system works outside of Torrance. Um, I've, I want to shout out, you know, to a few people. Like I've visited you know, Sky Middleton in Milwaukee, uh, Emma and Macy Barber in Fort Collins, Matt Becker in La Jolla, uh, you Ross know, White, uh, 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 Ross White in um, in uh, in Manchester, Chris Bailey in Scottsdale. Like, you know, my business travels have kind of taken me around to visit different people, um, and of course, you, Marty. You know, you know, when we started here in North Carolina, you were the CTC for us. So. You know, you, you know, but getting to know the instructors throughout the, the family, um, you see like the, you see that the system works outside of Torrance, which is cool. It's awesome when you go to headquarters, right. but when you see it working in other environments, um, it's really exciting. And uh, What's up, fellas? It's, it's, and Jim Pfeiffer, let's give a shout and out. Jim to Jim Pfeiffer. And Jim Pfeiffer just walked in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so uh, you know. Anyway, so it's been a great journey, and um, you know. It's, uh, we're thrilled to be a part of it. Yeah. Anybody you want to say thanks to or shout out to or anything? I, I mean, Ron has pretty much covered this. Of course, Huron and Henner and, and uh, Grandmaster Horion um, just... For creating the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, Grandmaster Elio. And, uh, yeah, just, just the fact that, um, like, like I said earlier about the whole family aspect of it, they just always feel welcome no matter, you know, you walk into a CTC anywhere, it's like, bam, your family. You know? Awesome. All right, guys. Well, I really want to want to say thank you for taking the time to share your insights a little bit about who you are and about that whole process of the ICP. So, uh, wish you much success, much health, and long life, bro. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we'd love to talk more, Marty, but it's time to train. <laughs> right on, let's go train. <laughs> Special thanks to all my guests today: Robbie Singh, Alan Manganello, David Christick, Ron Wilder, and. Bill Osterreich. Also want to say a quick shout out to my good friend Sonny Yu, who's currently going through the ICP program, and uh, we'll certainly get his take in a later date after he's been through the uh, live portion and completed the whole thing. So hope you enjoyed uh, this special ICP edition of the show, and stay tuned for the Make a Difference, Make an Impact segment.
time now for our Make a Difference, Make an Impact segment. Today's guest who will be doing that segment today is Jim Bundy, owner of Team Bundy Gracie Jiu-Jitsu in Warren, Ohio. Hey team, Coach Jim Bundy here with a quick success tip for you this fine afternoon. Circle of influence. Where do you get your inspiration, motivation, education? What are your influencers? What are the books that you read? What are the things you're watching on television? Who are the people that you surround yourself and who are you talking to on a frequent and daily basis? Gang, the environment that you put yourself in, the stimulus that you put in your mind is going to have a very big impact on how you believe, how you walk, how you talk, how you act, how you feel. If you hang around high energy, motivated people, if you're watching things that uplift you, inspire you, and motivate you, that's going to get you going that direction. At least it gives you a very high chance because that's what you're putting around yourself constantly. On the flip side, of course, if you're listening to naysayers and, and negative talking folks and negative things on television, that's going to put a negative cast over you as well. And it's really going to affect how you think, how you feel, and you might start believing all the negativity that you're hearing and that you're seeing. So I'd highly encourage you today, team, to surround yourself with only things that are going to positively affect you. And I know.